everybody my name is Michelle and in this video I'm going to give you some book recommendations for books that feature strong and empowering female main characters however before I do that I want to talk about the company that is very kindly sponsoring this video and that is Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand that I'm so so excited to be working with and you should definitely click the link to their website down below in the description box and they very kindly sent me these three earrings that i'm currently wearing so as you can see i have my ears pierced three times and that is why i chose these pieces because i thought they would look so pretty together like stacked together whilst i'm wearing them and i was right because i'm just obsessed with how they look i have small hoops with silver details and then a double hoop which is both silver and gold and then lastly i I have a golden hoop with a chain attached to it. I think this combination is just so pretty and I really love how it builds together and how these are three different types of hoops but they bring so much dimension and it makes it so interesting. They also look very luxurious and so pretty and they feel amazing. They are of such great quality. And what I also like about them is that it's both silver and gold so that is why I chose these ones as well because I usually don't wear that much gold jewelry but with these pieces I can incorporate them into my like jewelry style my personal style just so effortlessly and I love it. I'm again obsessed with how it looks. The delivery was also amazing because as you know I do live in the Netherlands but they have worldwide delivery and the package was here in a matter of days. It was so quick. I think these items and these pieces can be such a nice treat for yourself but they also are really nice to give as a present to somebody else. Even though they look and feel so luxurious they are not expensive at all. The prices start from $39. That means that there is something for every everybody in different price ranges and also in different styles. Not only is the jewelry of Ana Luisa so amazing but also they are very sustainable. They are a brand that is completely carbon neutral. They believe that we should enjoy beauty and fashion and jewelry and things like that without damaging the earth at the same time which is a message that I completely support. If you want to be completely up to date with everything that they are doing I would highly recommend following their Instagram page and subscribe to their newsletter that way you will always know about their new releases and exclusive sales so that is very much something that I can recommend again use the link down below in my description box to take a look at their site and also very exciting I have a discount code to give you if you use the code booksmichelle10 you will get a 10% discount on your next purchase and again please click the link and take a look for yourself. And now it's time to get started with the video and I'm going to talk about some book recommendations I have for you. Books that feature strong and empowering female leads. So when it comes to strong and empowering female characters, I think it can sometimes be a bit hard to define because of course it is possible to be strong and empowering in so many different ways. So when I selected these books, I tried to have a bit of a more broader definition in mind and to find books with female characters that are strong in different ways and show that in different ways. This list also features some of my all-time favorites. So with some of these books, um, like people who have been watching my videos for a while will not be that surprised, but still I think they definitely deserve to be here. And I truly hope that with this video, maybe you have some new books that you want to read or that you're interested in. So yeah, I think I just should start with the first one and tell you about it. And the first book on this list is one that most people might have guessed at this point, if you know me a little bit, but that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. The Nightingale is about two sisters in France during World War II. There's the older sister, Vianne, and there is the younger sister, Isabelle. And at the beginning of the book, they are quite estranged from each other. But then, of course, there is World War II and France gets occupied. And these two sisters have very different ways of dealing with the war. So this is one of my all-time favorite books. I talk about it all the time, but why I think it has some strong female main characters and why this book is so interesting is because it very clearly shows you two different sides from the war. Vianna is a mother. She has an eight-year-old daughter named Sophie. So she is trying to be very cautious and listen to the rules the Nazis are laying upon them. She wants to do everything possible to help her and her daughter survive the war and not to draw too much attention to her. But then there is the younger sister, Isabel, who is very much the opposite, who is very spirited and who wants to be in the resistance and do everything in her power to fight against the Nazis and just 
just do everything to end the war. So both these women are strong in their own ways. They are both strong and empowering, but they have to lead different lives. They have to do different things. And also both of their positions are completely understandable because of course, with Isabel, she's very brave. That is, there's no question about that. But what I like about it is that it's also the story of Vienne and about how it's so different when you're a mother and there's somebody else you need to take care of. And how Vienne is also brave, but in her own way and that she does her own thing to try whatever she can. And I think The Nightingale is so well-written, so beautiful, so emotional. And I think that's mostly because of the relationship between the two sisters and their different experiences. And this book is not based on true events. It's not based on real life characters, but of course their stories, the story of Isabel and Vienne are very much uh, stories that happened a lot during World War II. And I think that it's so good of this book that it portrays two different kinds of bravery during war in one book basically. So that is one of the reasons why I love it so so much and also why I would recommend it as a book with strong female characters. The next book I would like to recommend is Silka's Journey by Heather Morris. This book is about a young woman named Silka who has lived in real life, she's a real person. However, this book is a fictionalized version of events. Silka was a prisoner in Auschwitz during World War II, but she was also the mistress of one of the leaders of the camp. She did not want that, it was definitely not her choice, but basically she was forced to do so. However, after the war, because of her relationship with that camp leader, she is now sent to a Russian prison. This book tells the story of Silka, how she deals with everything that is happening to her. And I think that she is most definitely a strong and empowering female main character. So because I know it will be asked, do you need to read The Tattooist of Auschwitz before you read Silka's Journey? That is definitely not necessary. I think The Tattooist of Auschwitz might give a little bit more context to certain events, but overall, Everything you need to know is in this book. It's not really a series in the traditional sense. So you can definitely pick up Silka's Journey without reading that book first. That's totally fine. Yeah, Silka's Journey, like the book title and just Silka's Journey in general is unbelievable. What I like so much about this book is that it tells you that even after World War II ended, there are still so many horrible things going on. And for Silka, the war definitely has not ended yet. But I think she's also very brave in how she deals with her circumstances and how she tries to make the best of it and how she's always very kind that is definitely something about her her kindness and that she's so strong and that she can survive so many horrible things that is something that left such an impression on me again this story is based on a real life person but there's a lot that is fictionalized about it but still i was just in awe after i read this book i loved it so much i think it's such a testament of bravery and of courage and of just everything and it really, it is a good one and I think more people should read it because it is really, really amazing and just so beautiful and emotional. Then I have The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. So another Nightingale book. This book is the first one in the Winter Night trilogy, which is a book series that is inspired by Russian folklore. And it tells the story of a young girl named Vasha. It takes place in medieval Russia, but it also is sort of fantasy. And this girl Vasha has the special ability that she can see all the spirits and ghosts and just everything supernatural that is going around. But she's one of the very few who can do that. So she's very much met with suspicion. Apart from that, much more happens throughout the series and there's just so much. It's very whimsical and beautiful and magical and everything. Also emotional and tragic. This book series basically has everything. But Fasha as a main character is one of my favorites because specifically because of how she's always viewed with such negative like implications. Not from a reader point of view, but with all the other characters because she can see so many things that other people cannot see. Lots of people accuse her of being a witch, of being unnatural, of being dangerous. Because she very much speaks her mind at all times, she is like not viewed a proper young girl. But that is exactly what I like about this book because she goes on anyway and even though she has so much going against her she will still try to do her very best and to do what she believes is right and what i also like is that Vasha is not perfect she's far from perfect she makes mistakes and she recognizes those mistakes she just does the best that she can with whatever she has whatever is to her disposal and that makes this such a beautiful story to read and i cannot help but 
have so much admiration for Vasha and what she's going through. And apart from that, she's such an amazing female main character. The, this book series is also just so beautiful because the writing style is amazing. It is wintry and it flows and it's magical. And if you love things like folklore and mythology, then you will love this book series and this book. And I very much enjoyed spending time with Vasha as a main character because she is amazing and I love her. Then I have another historical fiction. I know, I know lots of historical fiction, but it is my favorite genre. But another book that I would like to recommend is The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. This book takes place along two different points in time. The first one is during the First World War and it follows a young woman named Eve. And Eve is actually a spy for England and she has to go undercover in France and be part of the famous Alice Network where she gathers information and gives it back to the English army. Then the second point of time takes place shortly after the Second World War and it's about a young girl named Charlie. Charlie is pregnant but out of wedlock. She's American and she's very upper class and of course it is very much not done to be pregnant without being married. But she decides to go to Europe to find her missing cousin named Rose who she hasn't heard of since World War II ended. And in this search she finds this very weird older lady named Eve. So the two stories connect and both Eve and Charlie are wow amazing. I think this is actually another case of having two female main characters who are so strong and so brave in different ways. Eve is your classic badass woman like she is tough she does everything that is necessary like wow. She's also funny which I very much appreciate but she's just Damn, like badass through and through. She's not afraid to be a spy and to do the dangerous work. And she goes through great lengths. And it's just wonderful to read about. And then Charlie is a little bit different. Because she of course was very... She lived a very wealthy life. She was very much protected. Even though the war was horrible. She lived most of her life in America in relative comfort. But she's now going on this journey to find herself. To discover new things. And it's amazing to see her grow throughout. What I also love is that the two stories have some very distinct parallels where different choices are made which i think shows very well how women can be strong in similar ways and how they can make different choices and how both of those choices can be very strong and brave this book does that so well and the dynamic between the characters and everything that is going on wow just wow amazing and i cannot talk enough about this one it's also one of my favorites that i've mentioned many times before but it's so so good and i really think more people should read it because it's just wow amazing and amazing female characters then i have a book that i actually haven't talked about in a while and that is every last word by tamara ireland stone this is a young adult novel and it's about a teenage girl named samantha samantha is part of the popular group at school she has a lot of friends and they're all about what you wear how you talk everything is very much dictated by the rules of popularity however sam has a secret and that is that she's mostly pretending and that she's only pretending to be like this in order to be popular. Sam actually has purely obsessional OCD and she very much struggles with that. But that is also something that she keeps a secret until she meets this new girl who is named Caroline and Caroline introduces her to the Poets Corner, a group full of misfits where Sam feels like she can finally maybe be herself. So this book, it is a bit different than the other ones on this list, but it is also one that I read a couple of years ago and I finished it in one go. What I love about it is that Sam is strong and empowering but in a completely different way than some of the other books on this list. I think being a teenager, a teenage girl on its own already requires a certain sense of being strong and of bravery. And I also think that the problems that Sam is facing is something that so many people are going to relate to. Like acting like you're somebody different in order to be popular, keeping secrets, feeling like your true self is not good enough. That is something that probably many, many people struggle with on a daily basis. And reading this book and going through Sam's journey and how she deals with that is just wonderful. I think this is a very empowering reason Read, and I also think it's a very important read. I think it can help so many people again because it's so relatable and recognizable and I think a big part of that is also because of Sam as a main character. I like how she is, I like how she's so flawed especially at the beginning but how it's a journey especially since that's the case for so many of us and how she deals with it and how her life goes basically and it's just a wonderful wonderful book that I would most definitely recommend because I haven't heard about it in a while so I think it 
deserve some more love and attention. Then for my next recommendation, I would like to recommend Sleeping Giants and basically the entire Sleeping Giants series by Sylva Novell. And as I said, this is the first book in a series which is also known as The Themis Files. And it's about a woman called Rose Franklin. And as a child, she fell into a weird, mysterious, huge hand. And now that she's an adult, she's actually in charge of finding this hand and finding maybe some other body pieces. And then what follows is a whirlwind of adventure and action. So much happens throughout the series. There's a bit of sci-fi. It's just amazing and weird at the same time. It is also told in the format of files. So diary entries, interviews, television segments, which makes it even more amazing. But for now, I would like to focus on two of the main characters who are very strong female main characters. And those are Dr. Rose Franklin and Kara Resnick, who is an Air Force pilot. So both of them are badass and again in different ways i guess that's sort of the theme of this video dr rose franklin is extremely smart and capable and that she is like the leader of this project is just amazing she's also extremely sweet and kind and that is very much something that you see throughout the book she is caring and she always tries to do the right thing as much as possible and then we have kara resnick who is just again like a badass character who does not deal that well with authority. She does whatever she thinks is right. She is like not afraid to speak her mind. She's also very funny. That is one of the reasons why I love her so much. She has some very funny moments. She's very direct, doesn't always do well with people. But that is also why you love her so much. And throughout the series and this book, there's like, of course, a lot more to their characters that I cannot talk about because of course, I'm not going to spoil anything. But just trust me when I say that these characters are amazing and i just love that this book again has multiple female main characters that are just so exciting to read about and that are examples in many ways and then at the same time they are also flawed in many ways but in relatable human ways and even though this book is told in the format of files their personalities are just so vibrant and so much there in this book it is amazing and i think they are a big part of why i love this series so much the plot is also epic but the characters are also very, very great. And then for the last book on this list, I have a little bit of a lighthearted one, and that is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jodie Meadows. And this is again a book that I've talked about many times. My Lady Jane is a retelling, and that is to put it mildly, of the story of the real life Lady Jane Grey, who was Queen of England for nine days. This book, however, is history, but it does not take it seriously whatsoever. It makes the story very funny. It turns and twists it around. There's a lot of meta commentary and pop culture references. So it is very funny, but I think it still deserves to be on this list because the Jane Grey from this book is an amazing female main character. First of all, she is a giant, giant bookworm, which I, of course, appreciate very much. One of her main character traits is that she is always reading and that there always have to be books everywhere. It's very much present throughout the book, which I just love so much. And it is done with humor and lightheartedness, but still, it is so much a part of Jane. And what is also very much related to that is that she's very smart. She knows all sorts of things about the most random things because she is always reading about it. It's also one of the recurring jokes and it's just so funny. But I love that they did that with Jane Grey and that they gave her so much agency in a way, even though this is a time period and a story where women basically don't have any agency at all. But this book does not play by the rules of history, even though those things are still very much present throughout. So this book can do it a different way. So they can make Jane very different. Like, I don't know how she was in real life. There's not that much known about like her personality. But in this book, she is amazing and she makes me love and she makes me root for her. So if you are looking for a book that is funny, but also features a strong female character, then My Lady Jane is the book for you because, oh, it is just one of my feel good reads. It always makes me happy. By the way, the audiobook of My Lady Jane is also great. I've listened to it a couple of times. It is very well narrated. It is funny. It will make you laugh. I promise. It's just so, so much fun. And Jane Eyre, no, not Jane Eyre, Jane Grey is an amazing main character. And just talking about this book already makes me laugh. As you can see, it's just, oh, one of my favorites. So this was it for my video about book recommendations featuring strong and empowering female main characters 
colors. I really hope you have enjoyed this type of video. I actually don't really do that many recommendations videos like this so please let me know if it's something that you enjoy and something that you maybe want to see more of i would love to hear also of course i would love to hear your own recommendation for a strong female character and a book that the character belongs to bit of a weird way of saying that please let me know your book recommendations but for now this was it for this video and if you liked it maybe give it a like a thumbs up or a comment or whatever also again please don't forget to check out my link in the description box and go to the Anna Luisa website and take a look at their items and again don't forget to use my discount code booksmichelle10 if you want to make a purchase but then for now this was it for this video and then hopefully I will see you again very very soon in my next video. Bye!